Hey, it's Adam from Collection DX, and today we're looking at Yamato's newest incarnation of the Valkyrie from Macross Do You Remember Love? Uh, Do You Remember Love was a movie adaptation of the t very popular TV show from the 80s, Macross, um, kind of taking the whole of the story and condensing it into a uh, two hour feature film. Um, for all of its, uh, and in that there are some redeco paint schemes um, and some aesthetic changes they make to things like the flight suits, um, giving the Macross more of an alien look, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But at its heart, basically, it's just a, a higher budget retelling of the Macross saga. So this is particularly the VF1S Roy Fokker type from the movie version. And what I like about Macross, one of the things is not only, you know, the, the history I have with the toy and the series growing up in Hawaii, but um, I like how at its story, it's, it's basically a love story. It's about how love conquers all. And in the movie, you know, if you've seen the film, I'm sure you know what I mean, that um, it's the song, and the song represents love. That's the uh, thing that kind of unifies the different races to work together, and I think that's always very cool. So let's dive in. We're going to take a look, transform it. i got to tell you, I'm going to just beat you, you know, save you some trouble, and it's beautiful. It's tight. It's it's just exquisite. It feels like a toy. So before I get going, though, I do want to show a couple things here. For $125, you pretty much get the jet, the pilot, which comes out, the super and strike armor. Basically, this is a strike cannon. They also give you a missile pylon to replace that with, but I use the strike cannon pretty primarily. I wanted to show this. They do include sort of a jet turbine inside. And I know a lot of folks like that line art accuracy. I prefer the um, vent covers on myself. I just don't feel like chasing parts and pieces, so I'm going to leave those on. I don't want really, you know, hate mail and comments saying, you left those off. I'll give you four sets of these missiles, four sets of the box missiles, two of the double pod heavy missiles, two like that. So you get a lot for your money. Oh, also um, some beefier anime hands. And they give you a couple clips to go with the aftermarket Yamato stand, which I'll show off a little later in the review. Um, so there you go. Let's kind of break down real quick what's in the box. So let's uh, get to playing with the toy. Oh, and before I forget, this review is, of course, sponsored by Angles. Angles.com is going to be where I'm going to be getting all of my Macross product from for the foreseeable future. And we thank them. All right, so, of course, we've got landing gear, and that goes in. When you first get it, if you have a hard time opening these hatches, just know that if you push up here towards the top, these little vents do open. Their, I think they're air brakes, actually. And it makes it easier to get the doors open. Yeah, the wheels are made of rubber. Um, I can't actually tell if the landing gear is die-cast metal or palm plastic. Um, it may actually be plastic. I don't know, it's cold to the touch, could be die cast, but it's very hard to tell, but, you know, it's solid. Um, there we go. If you've ever owned a previous Valkyrie, you're pretty familiar with the tr basic transformation, and it's all there. There are two clips on either side. You just kind of release the tension a little bit and get the backpack out of the way. Now... There's a clip here and a clip here. And just unclip. All the joints are nice and clicky. Now, with Garwalk mode, they've added a nice uh, gun putt. Tension holds that in, so when you let the legs go, it'll. It's got a joint, so you can get some extra leverage out of that. So. Same thing with the feet. They've got three positions. So when you want to get... Yeah, listen to that clicking. Very tight. When you want to get that. 
anime. You can do that. You really need to stand for that. But it will hold it. So when you don't want the unsightly gap, you just push in one. Nice touch. Let me get around so I can grab it. And then basically, nice improvement here, they actually created housings to hold the arms in tight. So you can pull that down a little bit. And these are on a basically a rotating hinge in here, much like the Bandai, much like their previous attempt at the 160 scale. Now, here's where you might want to be a little careful. Um, I have read some reports of breakage here with the mechanism. Um, I can see how if you just go yanking on it and you're not paying attention, you could cause, bust it off. But just be aware that the plastic is flexible enough that there's a little bump that goes over. And you want to get it over that. So again, so I don't know if you can try to stay on camera here. Just on a hinge. And there's a like a lip here. And it just should click past it. Now the shoulders are a little different here. The um, decorative shoulder pieces are actually in a sliding hinge. It's not actually a solid piece with a mechanism down here. Um, it's sort of like a shoulder cowling. So they, that's a little finicky, but you know, not horrible. I promise it won't look as goofy when I'm done. Hands flip out fully articulated. And this is something very cool they've done if you haven't already seen in the news postings and the fan forums. So they gave you double hinged elbows, which is very nice for getting those close to the chest holding the gun poses. Um, right here, it's got an extra hinge there, so you can really get the arm in close to the body. It's a very nice touch, as you'll see when we get to bat red mode. And voila! You have yourself guardian mode. And what's nice is you can just hold that. Everything's very tight. It's like they designed it. They know you're going to hold it there up top very well constructed everything all right so here we go that ride mode so i'm going to show you something here basically i broke my heat shield like my second transformation in and it's no reflection on the design or the materials they used i just really had a fluke accident my hand slipped um, and I, w I was doing something in the incorrect order, and I'm going to show you what I did. Thankfully, Yamato's Hong Kong office was nice enough to send me a replacement. Um, they didn't have a whole lot of extras, but they were able to spare one for me. It made me swear, don't break it again, we don't have any more. But I appreciate the fact that they got me that. And I'm going to show you how, what I did and um, how you can avoid it. But basically, you know, straighten everything out. I'm going to take the gun out of his hand just for the sake of trying to look halfway decent on video. Straighten out the arms. Just get them out of the way. So here's some more of that fancy Yamato engineering. There is, I'm going to show you, there's actually, make sure I'm on camera. Ah. clip there and a peg pointing up that way. So basically you've got to push the leg in and the clip will come out. Now remember there's a swing bar ho clip holding that in there. So once you get that free, you just pop basically that whole leg mechanism. If you ever, whoops, <laughs> as I send the camera flying. Um, if you ever had a 148 scale, you know what to expect except it's a lot tighter. Everything actually has a guided mechanism now. Um, so it's nowhere near as, oh my god, it's just dang, it's dangling. Everything's very tight. You get all those joints clicking. And 
Just straighten those legs out. Alright. Basically, just kind of bend down. Now, here's where I screwed up. You're supposed to push this whole part right here is die cast metal. And there are runners and, you know, it's basically a little guided track. And you want to push that down. I was trying to push that down after it was already in bat ride mode. And heat shield was kind of out. My hand slipped. Heat shield popped right off. Like yeah, I said, the heat shield out. And it is on runners. And just kind of clips that. So you're just going to let the chest kind of sit there. Don't force anything. Uh, flip the head around. There is a neck joint that is double hinge that kind of brings that down. Just rotate the head around. Now if it's easier for you, the head is designed to pop off, so uh, you could just go that route as well. Alright, so here's where, where it gets a little funky. It can be tough the first few times you do it. The nose cone opens up there. And there are two pegs that fill the hole that is going to be filled by the swing bar. And basically, you just kind of flip those down. Now, here's where it gets tricky. See, there's a hinge in there, a little gap. This swing bar is going to swing down. And you're going to have to get that gap to wrap around that. I already have the VF1A, and it appears they have sort of corrected the tightness here. This is on a hinge, and it's very, very tight. It does kind of rotate. So, open that up. Basically, you're just going to bring... Oopsie, hang on, I got my head backwards again. There we go. So you're going to have to make sure that you bend the swing bar before you try and get it in there. Um, I am reading, now I've transformed this thing a good 30 times now. It doesn't seem to be getting any looser for me. Make sure, however, as you, before you lock this in, that the pegs haven't flipped back up because they can get awfully jammed in there if you uh, try and put it in. There we go. Basically, you're just going to pull that and voila, it snaps into place. Now, it's not as bad as it looks. I'm trying to do this while I'm on camera, from me, so bear with me. But basically, that's about it. Uh, once that's in, this just kind of snaps into place there. Bring the wings down. Bring that down. Get your antennas out. Something very nice about the head is there is sort of a mechanism to get the head does have some movement in sort of where the neck would be, which is nice. Now, get the shoulders out, rotate the arms out. And it's tight. Um, one complaint I have about this, and it, it is, it, it's a nitpick. Um, I believe they'll, that when they do the GPS armor, they'll probably have side vents. But, you know, some folks have complained about the gap in there. Um, I think that they've made a very, very playable, handleable toy, and uh, I'm fine with that. If they come out with side vents, I will probably use them, but it's not a big deal. Um, this is, of course, you know, hinged. Another nice touch in keeping in mind that they're going to be doing GPS armor down the road. They've already made the vents so they pop out and fold down so when that big armor comes you'll be able to just put that out of the way. There. It's nice. Nice and clicky. The uh, double jointed arms are beautiful. Very well done. It's 
just tight. I think the proportions are excellent. Backpack sit. Oh, here's what I'm forgetting. Almost forgot. If you had a 148, this is the very same. Doesn't seem it, but you actually can push that hinge in. And actually, I also just push the chest plate down. And there's a hook here. You're gonna want to squeeze gently so that that hook can get over it. And then there you go. It's all gonna sit for you. It's nice. They did a really, really. It's just super cool. It's tight. Holds poles as well. They did a good job. I'm really, really impressed. This is definitely. Uh, I'm glad that I'm starting over in the Macross franchise, so to speak, as a toy collector. Uh, I wasn't heavily invested in the previous releases. Always wanted to be, just could never afford it. And. Uh, I think that they're off to a spectacular start. The shoulders can be a little finicky there. They do, they're a little tighter on my 1A that I just got in and I'll be reviewing next. Um, but they do sit, they hold poses, but you've got to be aware of them. You kind of have to put them back in place every now and then. As you can see, they just kind of a swing hinge, but everything stays tight. So I've been very, very impressed. Uh, so, of course, he came with Super and Strike Armor parts, so I'm going to do a quick little montage here and show you the different modes with the Strike Armor, and then we're going to wrap this up. So there you have it in a nutshell. That's the whole experience. That's what you get. It's, believe the hype, it's as nice as everybody's saying. Um, I'm even really recommending you go get yourself a stand. As you can see, it really lets you get those Garrock poses. Uh, nice ac and acrobatic and, you know, with the moving hinge. So that's worth checking out when you grab one of these guys. You, of course, can get you all your new 160 scale Macross or Mac 162.0 as I'm nicknaming it, um, product. I'm in. I'm very impressed. It's it's a, been getting a lot of off-the-shelf action. And uh, yes, they even look good in sets. You'll be seeing the review of him real soon. So, special thanks to Ken at Angles.com. Always great to have their sponsorship. And you can get yours there like I do. I'm really looking forward to more stuff from this line. Uh, really looking forward to those Destroids. So, till next time, I'm Adam.